Hi. Well, they say all good things come to an end, and this is the end of more data mining with Weka. The last class. Just summarize a few things here. This summary actually is from the previous course, from Data Mining with Weka. These are the main messages I wanted to convey there, and it's the same main messages as this time. There's no magic in data mining. There's no single universal best method. It's an experimental science. Weka makes it easy to experiment, especially now you know how to use the experimenter. But there are many pitfalls and many ways to go wrong, and you really need to understand what it is that you're doing. And we focused a lot here on evaluation and statistical significance using the experimenter. I talked more about all of these points at the end of the last course. You could go back and look at that video if you'd like some more expansion on these. This slide is also from the last course. This is what we missed in from data mining with Weka. Uh, filtered classifiers, working with cost-sensitive, with cost matrices, selecting attributes, and clustering and association rules, uh, text classification, and using the experimenter. And these should all sound very familiar to you because we've talked about them all extensively in this course. Plus, more besides, we talked about big data, you experienced big data. We talked about the command line interface, the knowledge flow interface, streaming data using the command line interface through Naive Base Updatable, discretization, discretization filters, uh, the difference between rules and trees, the similarities and differences, multinomial Naive Base for text classification. We had a little look at neural nets, the simple perceptron and the multilayer perceptron. We learned about ROC curves and learning curves and some more stuff about the ARF format and the XML version of it. We've done a lot. You've done a lot, actually, and I congratulate you for having got this far. This has been pretty intensive stuff. Learned a lot about a lot of important things. Of course, there's always more. <laughs> Time series analysis is a uh, really important area. How to uh, do data mining on time series. Uh, and stream-oriented algorithms, Naive Bayes Updatable is stream-oriented, but there do exist stream-oriented versions of other algorithms like decision tree uh, methods. Now they're in a MOA package, Massive Online Analysis, also from the University of Waikato. Multi-instance learning, where it's not single instances, but bags containing several instances that are labeled positive or negative. Uh, one class classification, where you don't have any information about the negative class, just about the positive class. That makes things very difficult, but there are some things you can do. Uh, and other data mining packages, there's a package called R, which has a a lot of excellent resources, and actually you can interface to this from Weka, so Weka can take advantage of those resources. Also, there's a, the libsvm package for support vector machines, and the liblinear uh, package for linear classification can all be reached through the Weka interface with the appropriate wrapper package. There's a distributed version of Weka with the Hadoop uh, system for distributing processing. And uh, finally, there's a technique called latent semantic analysis that you really need to know about to work on uh, text classification. And all of these things are available as packages for Weka. The new version of Weka has a system of packages where a lot of stuff has been taken out of the core and put into optional downloadable packages. So that would be interesting to learn about. And you know, I'm wondering whether we should, I should be thinking of an advanced data mining with Weka course. We call this course more data mining which cunningly leaves room for a third advanced course. And I'd be interested to know if you'd be interested in uh, that kind of thing. So here's just a few final remarks. Data mining is really important. They're talking about data as the new oil. The economic and social importance of data mining will rival that of the oil economy. Some people say by 2020 it might be happening as we speak. And you're right in there, you know, data mining is a wonderful thing to know about. It's an exploding field that will continue to explode. 
personal data is becoming a new economic asset class. You know, it used to be that the data revolution, the internet revolution, was about our ability to learn stuff from the internet, you know, Wikipedia and all the things you can learn. But a lot of it now is about personal data, our own personal data, and the economic importance of that. And we need a lot more trust than we have at the moment between individuals and governments and the private sector in order to fully uh, take full advantage of this new economic asset. We had a lesson on ethics in the last course. We haven't had a lesson on ethics here, but it's just as important. Uh, I would urge you to think ethically whenever you're working with data. A person without ethics is a wild beast loosed upon this world, Albert Camus said. And I don't want to loose a whole bunch of wild beasts through this course. So please think of ethics and what is our, what are ethical and the right kind of thing to do when you're working with other people's data. Finally, wisdom. You know the value attached to knowledge. This is the really important thing. Uh, Jimi Hendrix is uh, supposed to have said, knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens, which is worth pondering. There's no activity associated with this lesson. There's just the end of class assessment, which you should go and do now. And if you do well enough in that and the mid-class assessment, then we'll be sending you a signed statement of completion from the University of Waikato. Meanwhile, I hope I've enjoyed giving this course and uh, I hope maybe I'll meet you again in another version of this course. But for now, I'm just going to relax and play some music while you do the assessment. So, bye for now.